In this video, we will connect the ideas of metabolism and excretion to the idea of clearance. And then we will practice calculating what a molecule's clearance is. On this slide, we have kind of the big ideas. So metabolism and excretion both work together to decrease the plasma concentration of a drug. Now, we call this these processes elimination. But now we're going to formally define these as forms of clearance. Liver metabolism is referred to as hepatic clearance. That's CLH. Kidney filtration is renal clearance. And that's CLR. The total clearance observed for a drug is going to be a sum of the hepatic and renal clearance. This is a little oversimplification because other organs and tissues can engage in clearance, but these are the two big ones, hepatic clearance and renal clearance. Clearance is measured in plasma flow, so it's limited by how much plasma is being delivered to these organs. And the units are either milliliters per minute or sometimes, in fact often, you throw in an extra term per kilogram. And this is a reference to the patient mass. So how many milliliters per minute per kilogram of patient mass? How do we calculate clearance? Well, to determine clearance, we need to know the dose of drug that a patient received. Typically, we know that. How much drug did the patient get? And then we need to determine the area under curve for that dose. And we now know how to calculate that. We can use the trapezoid approximation to determine area under curve. I will note that the method I'm describing only works if it's an IV drug, so administered as an IV bolus. So here is some idealized um, CP time data. So here's our curve. This is for a five milligram IV bolus dose. Again, we need to do these calculations on IV data. And the patient mass is 70 kilograms. That'll be important in the next slide. And from this information, we could determine the area under curve using something like the trapezoid approximation. And we could, this calculates as 77.3 nanogram hours per milliliter. OK, this slide has a little bit of a rude start because there's all this math on here. But up in the upper left corner, there is our equation from the previous slide. We need to know the dose. We have the dose. It's 5 milligrams. And the area under curve, which we showed on the previous slide. Now, our initial calculation for clearance is right in the middle of the screen. We need to worry about units. So clearance is milliliters per minute. And yet here, in our formula, we have nanograms and hours. So there's some work in this slide where we need to convert our units so things will properly cancel and give the final units that we want. And that gets us to our number in the middle of the side. Our total clearance is 1,078 milliliters per minute. Now, this is the clearance for a full 70 kilogram patient. We normally normalize this based on a patient mass. So here is our total clearance that we calculated here. And let's just divide it by 70 kilograms. And what that gives is a number 15.4 milliliters per minute per kilogram patient mass per kilogram patient mass. And this is how you normally see clearance values reported. Now, be careful with these calculations uh, in terms of watching your units. It's a very common mistake. There is no idealized clearance value. Clearance values can range um, from, I would say, on a per kilogram mass from 0.5 to 50. So there's a big range in observed clearance values. So there's no ideal number. So that's how we calculate clearance. Um, clearance is easy to determine if we know the dose of drug that went into the patient and if we know the area under curve for that dose from the CP time plot. Note that uh, the method that we discussed only works for drugs administered by an IV bolus.